guys, Third Gen Farmer here, back another day. It's the next morning from the last video, and we are still harvesting our canola. Um, we've got one truck out here, the other truck is still full, um, but Dad had to rent town to go and pick up a little bit more fuel. Um, so, because we don't have any more on our farm right now. Um, but we're almost done our harvest, so we're just gonna pick up one more um, slip tank full of fuel, basically. Because um, one, it's quite expensive right now. Uh, and two, it's uh, what you call summer fuel, basically. And summer fuel means that it's good until to go down to about like minus one, minus two Celsius. Now, what do you mean by that? Basically, the fuel becomes almost like if you put water, right? You freeze water, it turns into ice. Um, it might slowly turn into like a slush or something, right? Well, that um, fuel, we like to say in terminology, it turns into like a jello. That's how fuel basically freezes. Is It's pretty much the same thing, but with fuel. Um, so until the season gets, like usually, like we're, Right now, what day is it? It's 10th of September, I believe. Um, and usually around now is when they'll start switching to fall fuel, which goes into about minus 10. And then eventually winter fuel, which goes down to minus 40, minus 50. I mean, it, so right now we don't really want to have a, like a massive truckload um, off of, sorry there, uh, a massive truckload of fuel to come into our farm because then we're storing it and we can't use that fuel over the winter because it one we probably wouldn't even be able to pump it in our equipment but if we could it would be useless because our equipment couldn't run on it because it would just gel up trust me we know we've had that happen a few wow a dozen times or so um so that's why we're just gonna hold off and we're gonna get our fuel when we get uh, some winter fuel, we'll get a little bit of winter fuel um, and it'll hold off for us to unload all of our grain and clear our yard in the winter, that kind of stuff. You don't use too much fuel in the winter time. Um, your main times that you use fuel is planting and harvest. Those are the two times of the year for any farmer that they're going to use the most amount of fuel. Um, or if you go in haying terms, then it's going to be when you're doing your cuts and making your silage and stuff or hay. Um, yeah, and then we use a bit of fuel for during throughout the year, obviously, and then like spring and stuff. But honestly, we don't use too much fuel outside of our harvest in springtime. But. Here, I'll just turn this around and show you what we got here. We're almost at the end. It's coming in nice here. Um, in our swaths. We got a few areas like this where it was just super wet. Like we actually almost got stuck with the grill there. There's massive ruts there. Oh man, that's gonna be rough. But this was super wet in the springtime when we planted this. And yeah, it is rough. As you can see by my head are bouncing around there. And now I'm bouncing around pretty good. Um, but yeah, there was a there was a lower spot right there where water ran through. Um, but I mean, hey, other than that, it's going good. We got a good wind going today. And my flag's a little tangled up up there. I think it wrapped around once and now it's going. But anyways, it's still flying because there's a decent wind going behind us. And we're out of the dust when we go this way. When we turn around, then we're in a little bit of dust. But I think this canola we said is running around that 30 bushel. Maybe a little bit more, 35, maybe a little less, you know. It's probably average of 30. So, yeah. I'll show you what I do here for my turn. Lift up a little bit, then I gotta go out here. Cause they're only 20, keep in mind, these are only 21 foot swaths. So I need to go out and then turn in. Otherwise my combine can't turn sharp enough. So now, I can do this one handed. Difficult. There we go. And now we're turning around.
pickup header because I know a lot of people might not be familiar with it. So these, we have eight tarps here. Those first ones will pick the crop in, then these ones just transfer it, and then this will bring it in our combine. Um, we don't need to have this in the middle, like I'll show you for example, is it all works the same. I can, if I need to pick more up over here, I can move myself over, I can go over here, and it's all gonna feed in uh, to the middle of the combine. Ideally, you want it in the middle because it has a more even feed um, into the combine. Um, but man, look at those reps on a side note. Not only there, that we went through, but here, oh man, we almost got stuck here. Those are some massive ruts. I can tell, it's quite bumpy. Sometimes we do what's double swath. I think about, I think not last year, but the year before, I have a few videos on that, where there's, we lay two, two of these swaths right next to each other, and then we can pick them up. So one swath will go there, and one swath will go here, and we can move them over. So that swath we can move over and meet in the middle of the two, basically, um, and have double the width of a swath. But you're limited to our combines, right? Uh, our combines aren't that big, so we can't do a double swath every year. When the crop's actually all right, we can we keep it at 21 feet, um, and it makes a good swath for our combines. Whereas on the crappy years, we'll do a 42 foot or a double swath kind of thing, um, and then we ha we can feed the combine fairly full without going seven miles an hour. Right now, we're going at here. Oops. We're going to have 2.8 miles an hour. Um, that's plus or minus. I, my average is probably around that 3. 2.8, yeah, that's about right. But, yeah. Still combining, folks. The neighbors are out as well. And they're Lexion combines. It's hammering. Hammering a lot of canola around here, that's for sure. They're, they're probably flying at like five, six miles an hour, which is, uh, it's crazy how, how far comp, like technology and equipment has come in just the last couple of years. Obviously these weren't the biggest of their year either. They were the smaller generation, but that's impressive. It's impressive seeing how fast they can take these big swaths off, zipping around, but. Alrighty, so I'm just hopping out here, take a quick peek. Alright, I just wanted to explain this a little bit to you guys. So these wheels are barely touching the ground. They're just skimming, I can put my finger underneath. Now these fingers are grabbing the swath, are grabbing here, that's what's gonna pull it in. Auger it, okay? You see our feeder, our feeder house chain in there, that's what's gonna bring the crop to the combine, okay? All right, then out the back. These are spreading the straw way out there. And they're spreading it nice and wide, get a good spread, just like you see over there. Okay. All right. I don't want to be stopped for too long. Because um, we'd like to get this done today, but and now, so it's really loud out there. But kind of quickly shows you the specifics. So as we go, you can kind of see right those teeth. They're grabbing, I can pop fingers, I guess you could say. Or grabbing the canola, bringing it in. Yeah. And finally, I look at my mirror, spreading it out back. Any of the, not the canola, but the straw that's left behind. Because I know, like, some of you guys might not be farming and might not realize, but basically everything that's been thrown out the back is just extra plant material, like the stem and everything around the canola, those pods and stuff, that'll just get grown out the back, and the canola is the one that's going in our tank. So, yeah, we're going to keep going by in here. I should say, me. The other combine still parked over there. Dad's still out at, in town grabbing some fuel, but we're getting her done nice and slow. 
and then we'll be out here giving her with both call mines right away. Beautiful day out though. Beautiful. Ah, so rough. Dumping. Ah. Yeah, I know it looks bad here, but all the stuff runs towards the window. It's not that bad. See? Right on the edge here it's bad, and then in the middle it's good. It is what it is. I mean, I'm not saying our combines are that amazing at cleaning canola, but eh, it's not too, too bad. Although that's worse than I usually is. Coming out black, that's for sure. Back and forth. Oh, I just had to catch that in action. The knee really over there. We got the trap. Oh, now my windshield is dirty. Sorry about that. Okay. You guys are probably nauseous now. The neighbors way over there with their grain cart. You might have seen there for a second. Dumping on the go around the headland. Here's us, both of us going. It's a good feeling. Everyone in the area kind of getting it off, you know? It's also kind of something to watch, I guess. Obviously we're calm mining, but we're still able to kind of see them do their thing in their little operation. Which, I mean, they got two ground mines there, so it's, uh, it's like a bigger version of our operation, but, I mean, we don't have a green cart or a green cart driver or any of that, so but that's okay, because farming is farming, and man, I love it. It's, the feeling is just awesome, especially harvest time when you can bring in, bring in what you've been waiting for for the whole year, planted and nurtured your crop and stuff. Now they get to feed the world, you know what I mean? So, well, it's, uh, even though we're small, you know, like these kind of things, these make a huge difference when we get a good crop. That's how we can get ourselves bigger and therefore have more crop and so and so, right? So. Wind's still blowing too. Folks, back at the yard. Um, it's later. We got all of our trucks are full, so we're dumping in one of our big hoppers here. Um, it's decently windy out, so we have it tied down. Um, Dad's coming around with the truck right now. We're gonna empty both trucks and then head back out. And keep smacking out the field. Well, we are broke down again, so we gotta go on the side, and I know exactly what it is my grain elevator, my clean grain elevator. It's my chain up here. And there's a chain up there and it came off the sprocket. So, this has happened once today already. See, that one, this one's supposed to be tight. It's not tight. So I gotta try and fix that. Okay, we're going again. I got that chain back on. Um, it was off actually in multiple different spots. Uh, there was a self tensioner idler. Um, there was two sprockets there. Put them on. Um, then I had to turn it by hand. And anyways, I got it on. I got it going. Dad gave me a hand. He's right there anyways. So it worked out. This has happened once this year. One other time. And that was just over there. That was not too, too many passes ago. And it happened, I think, over a year ago. And then we fixed it and tightened them down and stuff. But basically what happens is the chains in there that drive my auger here, the auger that's pouring out the gray in there. Um, about that, I had a phone call. But uh, basically the chains that are driving that have a bunch of different uh, sprockets that it rides on, and the, there's rubbers that hold the chain within a certain spot. So there's a rubber on top, rubber on the bottom, and the chain goes in the middle. Um, well, it's like a rubber, and almost like a polyester, I guess you could say, call it. Uh, probably closer to that. But anyways, it rides in between there, 
and it keeps it from bouncing around. Well, those have loosened off, and now, and then after, well, after a bit, those loosen off, and then the chain starts flapping like this, and then because it's going fast enough, and then if you get enough product in, the chain comes off. Um, we need new sprockets on there. Uh, hopefully, after this season, we will put new sprockets on there. That should fix that problem as well as maybe getting new polyester slash rubber um, to put on to fix that. But yeah, it's it's a minor annoyance and. I mean, it's not a thing too bad right now, but it's, it's downtime, basically. It's a little bit of downtime. It takes, I don't know, 10 minutes before you get back up and going, and it's a pain. It is a pain, but we'll get through her. So, this has been a long enough video. Honestly, it might be two videos. I'm not sure. Um, but... Uh, you guys have a good one. I'll end it here and uh, probably see you guys tomorrow when we're just finishing up this field and maybe even finishing up harvest of 2022. So you guys have yourselves a good one. See you later.